Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Wifestyle Image Network. Today, we're going to take a look at an overview of the book of Proverbs. It's one of the three books of poetry and wisdom that were written and penned by King Solomon, who was the son of King David. And so let's open up with a word of prayer as we take a look at this book and explore Proverbs. Father, we thank you and praise you so much for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us so many different ways to explore scripture, so many different avenues to fully engage with your word and to open this love letter of yours to us. I'm praying that as we take a look at Proverbs today, that you will help us to see it with fresh eyes. And I'm praying, God, that you will help us to realize that the facets that you show us of yourself are so varied and help us to appreciate all the different ways that you present yourself to us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we are here in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, as I mentioned, was written by King Solomon and some other wise people is what it says in my Bible. Some other wise scholars and people who penned Proverbs. Now let's talk about what a proverb is, first of all, because I find that people get confused about Proverbs because it's in the Bible. They take everything that's in Proverbs at face value. Let me tell you, Proverbs are meant to be a guideline. They are meant to say, this is the best way to do things most of the time. However, they are not commandments straight from God. They're not a thou shalt and thou shalt not type of thing. Proverbs are to lend you aid, wisdom, words of affirmation, words of encouragement or discouragement so that you will choose the right path. So with that in mind, this particular book of Bible is most likely written during Solomon's lifetime, which spans, or his reign, which spans from 970 to 930 BC. And so there's a lot of com poetic comparison and contrast. There's a lot of metaphor and simile and personification, if you're familiar with all these terms, where he might say things that, you know, wisdom is like, or wisdom could be compared to. A lot of times in this book, wisdom is compared to a woman, actually, and how you need to find her and search for her. And so there, it kind of adds personality to wisdom itself. And so as we look through these 31 chapters, we see so many poems. Some are short, some are long, some get right to the point, some are kind of harsh. <laughs> I'll share some of my favorites with you, but a lot of people go through the book of Proverbs in about 31 days. If you read one chapter of the book of Proverbs, you could finish it in a month. However, you could finish it faster than that, or take your time and kind of pour over it. For those who like poetry and like the poetic nature of how this is written, there's Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. And these are all in the same, written in the same type of way. And so the big topic in Proverbs is the pursuit of wisdom. It's all about getting wisdom, finding wisdom, acting in a wise way, what's not wise, to stay away from people who are unwise. I mean, there is poetry about parenting, about work, about money, about sex. There is poetry about adultery, about discipline, about drinking. There's so many topics that are spanned in this particular book. So here is like the big idea in the book of Proverbs. And we find it in Proverbs chapter four, verse seven, which says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. So this is paramount. Like of all the things you could get, of all the things you could ask for, of all the things you could experience, wisdom should be at the top of your list. And why wisdom? Well, the, the book explains more about that, about how it keeps you from trouble, how it gives you longer life, how it's more wise to seek advice than to go on your own understanding. Like it says in Proverbs chapter three, verse five, don't trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't mean to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. And so we want to use these as, as words of wisdom in our own lives and to teach others. Because this book is also about not just you, but about those who look, um, look at your life those who are learning from you, like your children, for example. Another one is this. 
it talks a lot about the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom. It's actually quoted exactly that way a couple of times in the book. The first one appears in chapter one, verse seven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So how do you start getting wisdom? By fearing God. It doesn't mean fearing God like, oh, God is, you know, so scary. Well, God can be scary to those who don't put their trust in him. But the fear of the Lord that we're talking about here is a holy, holy reverence. Like we're going to acknowledge what he says. What he says is true and honest and just, and nothing can be compared to it. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wise people know that number one, there is a God because the fool says in their heart that there isn't. Number two, wise people understand that you don't approach God this any kind of way because he's God. And so the fear of the Lord is a wise thing. Another one is this, Proverbs chapter 15, verse one, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Just how you speak, not just the words you speak, but how you speak them make a world of difference. And we all know this to be true, but Proverbs is here to remind us about how important our words are and how how we say what we say is just as important as what we're actually trying to convey. And then Proverbs chapter 22, verse one says, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. So prioritizing, understanding that Okay, riching, being rich isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, Solomon himself was rich. However, in his treasures, in his experience, in um, his own knowledge of what it is to be rich, he understands that, you know, a good name is better than this. Now, this is one thing about Solomon that you may or may not know, but he actually had an experiment going on where he tried to see you know, what things made him happy, what things made him sad. And out of all the things in the whole wide world that you could possibly amass for yourself, fame, fortune, women, whatever, he says a good name is better than all of those riches. That says a lot. And that's coming from somebody who was rich. So we should probably pay attention. He made mistakes in his life, but the Bible says he was one of the wisest men who ever lived. And so what better man than to pen the book of Proverbs, which we have today. Last but not least, Proverbs 31, the very last chapter of Proverbs is all about a mom who is giving advice to her son, who is a king. And she gives him like a few words of advice about how important it is to rule his kingdom. And then this whole discourse about a good woman. And so many women have lived right here, this Proverbs 31 woman, this ideal, perfect woman, and how he needs to find a woman like this. Now, once again, this is a proverb. So that doesn't mean that every woman should be exactly like this. This is the ideal woman. This is a woman who is in the mind of a mom that she wants for her son. And so it talks about a good wife. It gives advice to this king. You know, this woman rises up early and gives bread to all of her household. You know, this woman, um, her family has no fear of the, the snow because they're all clothed in scarlet. We're not dressed in scarlet all the time. And in some places, it doesn't even snow. So obviously, it doesn't apply to all the people all the time. However, when we understand that this woman was a hardworking woman, we understand that this woman knew enough about money to run a business. We understand that this woman didn't waste time in sleep. She wasn't lazy. She got up early. She did what needed to be done. And so you have to take all of these proverbs kind of with a grain of salt, if you will, to just kind of say, wow, this is a good thing to do, but it's not a commandment by God. And there is a big difference. So I hope you enjoy your reading of Proverbs. Let me know what you think. Go ahead and join Lifestyle Image Network and go into this particular course so that we can talk about what's your favorite proverb and why do you enjoy it. And make sure to stop by next time as we go into the book of Ecclesiastes, which is the second book that Solomon writes all about wisdom. So until then, I'll see you later and God bless. Bye.